All right, good morning, everybody. All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm Mitch Bishop, the Chief Marketing Officer for .NET Nuke, and this morning we've got an exciting live simulcast event for, for you. Uh, we're introducing the social revolution, .NET Nuke 6.2, and we're coming to you from the beautiful Sonoma Mission Inn in Napa Valley. We've got our partner advisory council meeting today, and we've decided to take this opportunity to launch DNN 6.2, which is now shipping. And um, we're super excited about this release. The social revolution has started for .NET Nuke. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our co-founder and CTO, Sean Walker. Good morning. It is so nice to be here in sunny California. Um, it's definitely much nicer here than it is back home in Vancouver, so it's nice to be able to travel to someplace nice and sunny. Um, I want to thank uh, our partners for joining me this morning and the folks online um, for introducing .NET Nuke 6.2, the social CMS for business. Um, before we get started, um, I just want to say how important it is that we have such a, a rich partner ecosystem around our product. Um, offering our, our commercial products to the market is something that's really important for us and it's something that allows us to invest in our free open source product as well. And so the commercial side and the open source side um, mix together very well in, in perfect harmony so that we can provide our products to the market. So first off, we're going to talk a little bit about industry trends. Um, so before we get into the 6.2 features, uh, we just want to talk about why uh, 6.2 is relevant and why we chose to go down this path with, um, with the 6.2 product. So in terms of market trends, um, basically at the turn of the, uh, the, the millennium, um, I think a lot of us were involved in creating websites, creating websites that were publishing information. This is truly the information age, and it was all about pushing information out to consumers. As we moved forward to 2010, it became a lot more about engaging. Social networks became very popular, and it became the communication age where you were pushing and pulling information, and people were interacting on your web properties. Uh, as we looked towards the future, we don't really know what that future is going to hold because we really couldn't have predicted in 2000 what 2010 was going to look like. So if we look towards 2020, the future is fairly uncertain, but we do know that business is going to have to adapt to whatever comes along. And so we believe that you need a dynamic web infrastructure that's sort of a prerequisite for adapting to this world that's changing. The other thing that's happened in the last 10 years uh, is a lot of disruptions when it comes to technology. So disruptions, when, when we think of disruptions, the three main disruptions that we're looking at today are in the area of the cloud. Um, so cloud infrastructure, the ability to you know, spin up um, websites on infrastructure very seamlessly and very easily. Um, the mobile revolution, Everyone has very rich mobile devices today that they want to interact with their website on. And then obviously social. So social interactions on your website so that you can better engage with partners and customers. Um, and this is the area obviously we focused on in 6.2. There's been a content explosion as a result of these technology trends. Things like the cloud, mobile, and social have made an explosion in content, in even simple content, as well as rich content such as images, videos, and graphics. But at the same time, uh, organizations are under extreme pressure um, because of these content explosion, because of these disruptions in the market. Um, and businesses still need to take care of things like dealing with growth, um, bringing products to market very quickly, dealing with competition in, in very uh, quick order, uh, keeping the costs down, and dealing with the complexity of the infrastructure and basically the web in general. So, at .NET Nuke, we believe that your website is the central hub of your business. Um, we provide a lot of functionality around our platform, which allow you to adapt to the market. Um, and if you don't find the functionality you're looking for in the box, you can extend that functionality with, with modules, add-ons that are available commercially in our marketplace, called the .NET Nuke Store. And we're also focusing more and more on integrations with other best-of-breed systems now. Um, primarily, we focused on SharePoint, at this point, but we're looking at adding integrations with a lot of other best of breed products as well in the areas of per perhaps CRM or marketing automation. 
So let's talk a little bit about the social revolution, which is really the primary focus of .NET Nuke 6.2. So the Ultimator Group is a analyst firm that uh, surveys the market, and this was a quote that we took from them. So social media is no longer the latest shiny object. 79% of corporations are undertaking social media efforts. And this was uh, a quote from 2011, but it basically emphasizes how social media in the consumer world is now impacting the business world. The business world wants to be able to take advantage of the benefits of social interactions within their business. The social landscape is another thing that we need to uh, pay attention to. Uh, because in the last few years, we talk a lot about social, but social isn't exactly clear. It means different things to different people. So when we look at the social landscape, we obviously have the social networks at the top of this uh, graph here, which uh, talks about social networks like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, that is definitely an element of social. Um, if we take it to the next level, we've also got brand monitoring, social analytics, features such as uh, and, and insights, basically to monitor your company brand online. And there are businesses that focus solely on this area. If we go down further, we've got aggregators. Aggregators that pull information from social networks and aggregate them together so that you can consume them in one sort of simple dashboard. And then there's also publication. So publishing information back out to those social networks so that you can reach as broad an audience as possible. And then at the bottom end, we've got the social platforms. These are the platforms that allow you to have interactions to create content, which can then be published out. Um, this is the area where .NET Nuke is focusing today with .NET Nuke 6.2. We are a platform. We've always been a platform. And we've currently, in 6.2, now enhanced it with social capabilities to make it very interactive. And we're going to be taking that much further and actually pushing that platform up into some of these other areas where it comes to aggregation and publishing uh, in the future. In terms of social business value, I mean, why is this important for businesses? So why, why are businesses finding social important? Um, so if we look at the enterprise benefits of social, there's actually benefits for every sort of function that's in a company today. Marketing, sales, service and support, all of these different functions in your company can get benefit out of social. They can get benefit in the form of insights. Insights it meaning customer interactions that are happening related to your products or services that you can identify and then you can take action on. Um, it also allows you to move much more quickly than you could in the past. So you can respond immediately to social responses related to your products and services. You can track um, what's happening over time to identify trends around your products or services. Um, in the sales area, you can you obviously use it for lead generation, and you can use it for enhancing an in or innovating your products as well by using crowdsourcing techniques to monitor the interaction so that you know what the features are that your customers want, uh, and then you can take action on those. So all of these benefits come about because of the social interactions which are happening today. So one of the problems that we have today is that there's a lot of social solutions out in the market, but they're all sort of silos, meaning you manage different types of social interactions in these different systems and they're not integrated together. And because they're not integrated together, it's very difficult for you to get the insights out of them that you're looking for that you can then use to leverage them into business opportunities. So another survey or another part of the survey that the Ultimator Group did was what are the top social strategy objectives for the enterprise? And there was a number of different categories which showed up, but the, the most compelling um, response came back around website integration. So enterprises do believe that their website is the hub of their business. And they also want to take advantage of social as a part of that hub. So obviously social integration with their website came out on top. Um, many of you are probably familiar with Jeffrey Moore. Jeffrey Moore is the author of a number of books. Probably the most popular or the most noteworthy that he's written is Crossing the Chasm. Um, where he talks about technology trends and their adoption life cycle. Um, recently, he came out with a report called A Sea Change in Enterprise IT, which talks about content management systems and talks about the evolution of content management into sort of what the next generation of products and services look like. Uh, his quote was clearly systems of engagement, and he defines systems of engagement as basically social business systems, need to operate on top of and in touch with our existing core systems of record, and he classifies a system of record as a content management system. So the analysts have recognized that social needs to be an integrated, integral part of content management going forward. 
So the solution that we see to this problem is obviously combining content management with social and creating a fully integrated presence so that you can create a website for your customers that both manages content but also manages the social interactions and insights um, for your business. So we're taking an integrated, integrated approach to engagement. We uh, traditionally have always had a, a content management system which allows you to create content and publish it. And that content management system allows you to reach the two billion people that are available on the internet today. What we're looking to do is enhance that content management system with additional social capabilities. There's the ability to do social business collaboration. So this would be collaborating with customers and partners, which obviously reaches the same set of users, but in a more meaningful way. And then there's also the social enterprise, so increasing productivity within the enterprise itself for your employees, making them more productive, incre increasing sort of improving efficiencies and productivity in your workforce. And in total, we sort of look at this as the overall picture as social web engagement. And so this is the area that we're focusing on as a company today, and this is what drove our decision to move in this direction with .NUC 6.2. So, we are announcing .NUC 6.2 today, and we're classifying that as a social CMS for business because we've added a lot of core functionality to .NUC 6.2, which turns it into a truly into a social platform. Obviously, as a social platform, you can do many, many things with it. You can do publishing to some of the popular social networks. You can manage content on your website through blogs and forums and other things. And we'll go into some of the specific features around 6.2 now. So in terms of the uh, social CMS for business, there's a couple of use cases that we've been looking at in terms of the things that we want to provide, um, which, which we're catering our product to. So social collaboration for internal use, this would be in, in an intranet, where you're trying to increase productivity and efficiency and cost savings by allowing the employees in your organization to, to communicate with one another in a social manner. And that means that you're building a large knowledge repository of interactions that are happening between your different employees. It um, provides better communication mechanisms. And you can better monitor sort of what's going on in your organization. And, and basically stay away from the problem that typically happens where information is kept in silos. You can obviously improve collaboration and allow that information to be shared more effectively. Uh, the other use case that we're looking at is community websites. So these are external facing websites where you want to interact with partners, customers, and other folks in a social manner. Allow them to interact with you about your products or services. Allow them to comment and rate and provide insights that are going to help you drive your business. Um, by doing this, you allow your customers to become your biggest advocates, your biggest evangelists. And at the same time, you can help reduce um, support costs and things by allowing basically the members of your community to sometimes you know, help themselves by posting questions. Other members of the community can post answers. So it, it takes some of the onus off you as the business to take care of your entire ecosystem, where the ecosystem can actually become a valued partner for you. And it obviously also allows you to increase revenue as well um, by recognizing opportunities where you can capitalize on things that the community or your customers need. So .NUC 6.2 has a very long list of features. There's a lot of great functionality in this release. I would say it's probably one of the most significant releases that we have ever had as a company. Uh, there's a lot of rich functionality that we've provided. And we've provided all of this functionality as part of our core product because we believe that it's going to be a foundation for the future of our platform, meaning that we want third-party developers to be able to take advantage of these social capabilities and build exciting new applications that they can provide to customers and partners. Some of the features, I'm going to go into more detail, but at a high level, we've got uh, the activity feed, we've got social groups, relationships. Um, so the relationships allow you to um, create deeper relationships between users of your site, user profile, a, me a mes improved message center, a member directory which allows you to actually manage these interactions between the users, the ability to log in through social networks with your authentication credentials that you have for social networks, a more streamlined registration system, uh, a social API which is built on, uh, basically allows developers to utilize all of these different social functionality, um, a services framework which allows developers to build uh, services in a more modern way and applications in a more modern way. And we've also got some nice improvements to document library, 
SharePoint 2010, and we also, the, the platform is now fully localized. So if you go into some of these features in more detail, if we look at the activity feed, uh, we also refer to this as the journal. Um, when you actually add it as an instance of a module to your site, it's actually called the journal. But it allows you to basically have a central area which tracks all of the different interactions that are happening on your website that are related to you know, users contributing content or commenting on things or voting on things. Um, so basically, uh, it's, it's a central dashboard for all of the different activity that's happening on your site. Um, it allows a user to contribute and it allows a user to monitor what's actually happening in your community. Um, some of the features that it provides are it allows you to share files and photos and videos very simply. Um, it allows you to like content. It allows you to tag comment. You can comment on individual items as well. So you can create a, a, a whole um, activity stream of, of things that are related to a specific item. Um, it's very easy to update. It allows for group discussions as well. So the journal sort of is a central part of the, uh, the social capabilities of the platform. And there is a complete API around the journal, which allows third-party modules then to write content into the journal. So that activity feed is going to become very rich over time as more and more modules adopt it and more and more items are included in there so that you can basically monitor all of the activity that's happening on your site. Social groups is a new area as well and it's basically you, a way that you can set up groups for just about any purpose. They could be special interest groups, there could be groups for different uh, departments within your organization, um, there could be groups for different fans perhaps or you know customers of specific products. You can do pretty much anything with groups. The idea behind groups is there's a way for users to be associated with groups and once they're associated with a group then they can actually contribute to the activities that are happening with that group. So they can contribute content, um, they can upload photos, they can provide status information related to that group. Um, and so there's a lot of interesting things that can be done once you have the groups and there's basically an unlimited number of groups that can be supported by the platform. It's great if you want to break it down for teams because so it can increase your ability to collaborate with one another. Um, and there is the ability for these groups to be both public access for anyone that's in your community as well as private. If you want to have private groups that are only specific to certain members of your organization for collaborating. On the relationship side, um, we've always had sort of the, the, the notion of an identity in .NET. We've always had the ability to create users, for users to log in and interact with the site. Um, but we never had the ability in the past for users to associate with one another. And so the relationships area of .NET Nuke 6.2 allows you to create relationships between users. A user can say that they're a friend of another user on the site, which creates a, a, a two-way relationship if the other person accepts the, the request. There's also the ability for somebody to follow another user, which is essentially a one-way relationship. Um, these relationships are used in interesting ways in the product, um, and we'll get into some of that in the demo. Um, but it, these types of functionality are very common in social networks today. So a lot of the, the features that we've integrated in 6.2 are things that consumers can do in social networks and they would like to be able to take advantage of in the, in the enterprise. Um, it also is integrated with our notifications area, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but there's a lot of benefits to being able to create relationships. And then once the relationships are created, new interesting modules can be created which actually are built on top of these social relationships um, which allow a lot more functionality and a lot more um, benefit to the organizations that take advantage of them. We've always had a rich user profile in the product, but it's become a lot more rich. There's a lot more functionality that's available in the user profile. Um, user profile now has the ability to have an activity feed which is specific for that user, basically a filter that's specific to the activities that that user performs. They still have their profile. They have the ability to also identify who are their friends. And there is also a message center as well that's available. The, um, the user profile is completely templatable now so that you can make it look the way that you want to so it matches the brand identity of your organization. Um, this is a, a, a real great improvement over what we've had in the past where the user profile was a little bit more limited in how it could be designed so that you, it was more difficult to, to make it, to tailor it to the specific um, views that you wanted for your organization. There's also a personal file manager for individual users. We've always had the ability for users to have a sort of a local 
storage area for their documents uh, on the website, but um, it was very difficult for users to get access to that. And with the personal file manager now, which is exposed through user profile uh, and through the journal and other areas, it allows you to very quickly see the documents that you've uploaded to the site, manage those documents, um, remove them, and do various things in terms of managing your personal document store. So this is another great feature in 6.2. Um, new message center in 6.2. So the, uh, the message center that we had in the past um, was there, I think, since uh, .NET 5.6. Um, it's been completely overhauled with a very modern looking user interface, much more interactive, and emulates much more of the capabilities that you have in message centers uh, in consumer social network products. Um, so the messaging area allows you to send messages to other users in the site and they can reply. Um, you can archive your messages. You have basically full functionality to deal with your messages. In addition to that, there's a new type of message that's been introduced. It's known as a notification. And a notification is a message that you as a user is expected to, you're expected to take action on it. So it actually contains some actions that are attached to the message. And so you basically, then if you go to the notifications area in the product, um, it gives you a list of all of the different activities that you need to perform on the website. And you can take action directly from that view. So rather than having to browse around to different areas of the site, um, which is you know, not very productive, you can go to your notification area and you can take action immediately from that, that area. And um, it's just a, a lot more efficient way of dealing with things. And this is another very critical part of .NET 6.2, which we expect third-party module developers to take advantage of. So if there's activities that they want users to perform that are part of their modules, they can write those to the notifications area so that there's a completely integrated experience for the user. They go to the notifications area and they take action on them immediately. Um, the notifications have been integrated into the, the friend controls so that if you do a friend request, um, it's a notification that shows up in your inbox and allows you to either accept or reject it. Um, it's also integrated in some other areas. I think another notable area for the users of our professional edition product is it's integrated into our workflow model. So when you are entering content on the website and it's going through a workflow process, um, the, basically the actions that you need to take to either approve or reject that content go into the notification area now. So you have this very nice area where you can go and you can actually deal with all of your content approvals in one centralized location. The member directory is another key part. And in the past, like I said, we've always had the ability to manage many, many users on a .NET website. But there was no ability for those users to interact with one another or discover one another. Um, the only folks that would have access to the membership of your site would be the administrator. So with the member directory, it now allows you to expose your membership to the users of your website. Um, this is especially important in intranet scenarios where you definitely want all of the different employees to be able to discover one another. And the member directory provides the ability to set up the different relationships between the different users. So if you want to set up a friend relationship between yourself and somebody else in the organization, you can do that through the member directory. Um, the member directory is also completely templatable, meaning you can make it look however you desire. Um, and you'll also notice um, in the screenshots and in the demo that we'll do, that a user's identity has become a lot more important in .NUC 6.2. So this idea that users identify themselves and actually upload a photo of themselves, and then they're identified throughout the site as actually being themselves and actually having an identity is a critical part of .NUC 6.2. And it's something that we expect other module developers to start integrating more and more as well, so that um, these rich sort of profile type of information is exposed through other modules. Um, as I mentioned, we also have social login capabilities. So a lot of people don't want to manage their identity on many different websites or basically maintain different login credentials. So we have the ability now that you can log into a .NUC site using your credentials on popular social networks like Facebook, your Google account, Windows Live, or Twitter. So these are authentication providers which we ship with the platform. And it allows you, as a user, to basically maintain sort of one identity. So you can use the same username and password that you use on, a, on your preferred social network to log into your .NET Nuke website. Um, the other benefit, which um, we will be building on in the future, is when you, once uh, a user has authenticated with some of these social networks, it allows for much easier publishing and exchange of information between your website and those social networks, um, which 
we haven't provided any integration for yet in 6.2, but it's something that we're looking for in the future. And it's something definitely that module developers can take advantage of too, um, now that this is a core part of the platform. Uh, .NET always had a registration process. The registration process uh, is pretty robust, but um, one thing that we heard in terms of feedback around our registration was that typically users would be required to enter more information than they would prefer. Um, and so we've actually reduced the, the registration requirements, made it a lot more streamlined. Um, if you want to have a registration that's as simple as just a user entering a, basically a username and a password or basically an email and a password, you can do that now. In the past, you at least had, I think, five or six required fields. And so the barrier for users to actually register in your site was much higher. So by making it more streamlined, it'll actually allow you to create a community much more simply by reducing that barrier um, for people to get set up. There is a new unverified status as well that's been introduced as part of registration, which basically allows users to contribute content to your site and interact socially, um, but in an unverified state. Um, so basically, again, this is keeping the, the barrier to entry down, not putting a really onerous process on people to set up an account before they can contribute. You may want them to contribute immediately and then after the fact determine whether or not um, you want to keep them as part of your community. Um, social API, so all of the features that have been introduced in 6.2, features such as journal, messaging, relationships, groups, all of these have an API that are part of the core framework. So the same way that you've always been able to build modules that take advantage of our core APIs, you can now take advantage of these social APIs. And because they're shipped in the platform itself, you don't have to worry about whether or not those APIs are going to be there or not from one installation to the next. They will be there in every installation from 6.2 forward. Um, and there's already been a number of integrations that have been done with some of our core modules. Uh, for example, the active forums, um, product which is going to replace our, our previous core forum um, is now integrated with, um, with the notifications, for example. The blog module uh, has a new version that came out today as well, which is integrated with some of the social functionality. Um, and if you go to .nanook.com, there's a lot of modules that we've written to manage our community and create more interesting ways for them, people to interact in our community. For example, the QA module, um, there's a community exchange module as well. All of these things are going to be integrated into the social APIs ultimately so that you have a complete picture of all of the different social interactions which are happening on a site. A lot of these new capabilities have been built using the new services framework. Um, the services framework is basically a, a nice way for a developer to be able to build web services in a secure manner for the .NET new platform. Uh, in the past, creating web services was a little bit challenging, and so we wanted to provide a, a consistent way for developers to build web services and, and in, ensure that when they do so, that those web services are exposed in a secure manner. So we've, the services framework today is delivered on MVC2, um, which is interesting in that um, .NET Nuke is a web forms application, but we're also utilizing um, MVC as well for the services area because it provides sort of a rich framework that we can build on top of. Um, we're also taking advantage of a lot of new client-side capabilities in .NET Nuke 6.2 to provide a more interactive, rich user interface. Um, for example, the, the messaging area is a, is a great example of this, which you'll see in the demo. Um, but we're using a lot of modern techniques with our framework now. jQuery, Knockout are things that developers are using more and more to create these sort of rich client-side um, user interfaces, and we've done that in .NET Nuke 6.2, and it's totally possible now for third-party developers to also build modules in this way and take advantage of the same techniques that we have in terms of using jQuery, Knockout, and our services framework to build modules going forward. Document Library is a, a feature of our Professional Edition product, um, and it basically allows you to manage a, a very large library of documents. Um, it is now fully integrated into the core storage system, meaning it uses the same folder and file capabilities as the core framework does, and the same permissions model as well. In the past, it was basically, it would store documents in its sort of own repository using its own permissions model, and now it's a completely integrated experience with the rest of the platform. This was something that um, customers had been asking for for quite some time, and we're really happy that we were able to deliver it. 
Um, as a result of doing this integration, it now allows Document Library to also take advantage of some of the features that we introduced in .NET Nuke 6, um, especially in the area of folder providers. We already have folder providers in our professional edition product that allow you to store documents in Amazon S3 or Windows Azure. So now Document Library can take advantage of those same capabilities to store documents in the cloud. We also delivered SharePoint 2010 support as part of .NET Nuke 6.2. Um, we introduced SharePoint 2007 support in the past for document publishing, and now we've extended that to also uh, support SharePoint 2010. Um, we've seen that uh, more and more organizations are starting to migrate from SharePoint 2007 to 2010. Um, and so we thought it was important for us to be able to support both of those platforms going forward so that people can leverage their existing SharePoint investments um, and then they can publish documents from their SharePoint repository to their .NET Nuke site. And as I mentioned earlier, we now have full support for five languages um, in all editions of the product. So Community Edition, Professional Edition, Enterprise Edition are all fully localized uh, from an admin user interface perspective, which is a huge benefit and it should allow us to uh, work with many people around the world more effectively now and allow you know, administrators using their native language, in, um, especially in European countries, um, to utilize our product more effectively. And with that, I'm going to hand over the, uh, the presentation now to Will Morganwick, our Director of Product Management. Um, who is going to do a demonstration of some of the features in .NET Nuke 6.2. Thank you, Sean. So as you saw, we have a, a large list of features in 6.2, and I, I hope everyone's as excited about that list of features and what they can build with it as we are. Um, Sean did a very good job of going into some of the details of those features. And what I want to do is kind of tell a little story of how these features are, could really apply in a business scenario. Um, hopefully everyone has seen our, the video that came out a couple weeks ago about these two guys that decided to go and create their cycling fanatics and decided to go and create a website called Awesome Cycles. Um, so what that story tells you is about that adventure that they went on to try to figure out exactly what they wanted to build. And so as part of this demo, I kind of want to show how they carried that through and, and what the end result ended up being. So I'm going to take the approach. I'm going to use two different people. I'm going to start off as myself. I need to go buy a bicycle. Then I'll finish that, and then I'll come back and log into the site as an administrator. So the first thing, of course, I want to buy a new bike. Right? So I go to Google, and I'm just going to type in mountain bike. And because we've done a great job with SEO on .NET Nuke, you can see we're the number one search result. And we're going to go ahead and click through. And of course, it takes a little bit for the demo to fire up, but here we go. And you can see I've got a, a discussion going on here. There's this new bike. It's just been released. Um, it, and they're talking about it on the site here, about how great it is. You can see the forum discussion, other people participating, a couple people already pre-ordered. This looks like this could be the bike for me. So, I'm going to go ahead and look at the bike and oh, look at that. That is a fantastic bike. Um, I have to have it. The description is perfect. It's $500. I've, I'm just going to go ahead and buy that now. So I've gone ahead. I'm going to go through the process here. I'm going to proceed to the checkout. Um, let's go ahead and bear with me as we go through these fields here a little bit. Still using my old hometown. So all that looks good. Let's go ahead and proceed to the payment. Everything looks good there. I'm going to pull out Sean's credit card. And so now I've just purchased the bike. Um, I have this little description here. It says, be sure to visit our customers only page to download the owner's manual. So it looks like I just bought. Now I'm a customer. And then there's this guy, the awesome dude, Scott Brown. Let's see what, what he's about. Um, 
So he's got his photo here. This looks pretty good. He's talking about it. I'm going to add him as a friend. And, but, you know, I've just bought the bike, and, but I really want to learn something about it. Um, you know, I can't wait to get it, but I'm excited. So I'm going to go to the, um, the customer's only page, and I want to check out the owner's manual. So we just bought the XBR, and I don't, it's not here. So maybe they, they just released it. I don't see it in the document list. Um, I'm going to go back to this Scott guy, and let's send him a message. So we've gone ahead and sent them a message, but I'm going to go ahead and let's, you know, I'm, I'm, as, I'm as, as a customer, I'm going to go through the discussions, and let's, let's go back to this post here, and because we're now, just, without, we, just by the fact that we purchased, we're now a member of the community. We, it automatically created my account for me, added me the customer role. And I'm on the site. And I'm going to go ahead and let's go back to the community page here. And now I can see some of the activity taking place um, that's, that's going on here. So you can see that there's lots of discussions taking place in the journal. Um, we can see this person talking about this. There's this Jim Jones guy. Mm, he looks pretty good, too. Let's go ahead and add him as a friend. But, you know, I also I just bought this bike. So um, let's see what other groups we have here. So I could join this group um, and go through the details and participate on the site. But um, we also could go ahead and browse through the list of members. And I could join, add a few other people. This person looks pretty interesting. Um, we'll add her as a friend too. But you know, I really, I'm kind of waiting. I want to get that owner's manual. I want to check out the site. So there's really not much left that I can do here. So I'm going to go ahead and log out, and let's kind of switch gears a little bit. Go back to my community page. And now I'm going to log in as an admin. So the first thing I can see is the new, the, the new user control up here that's telling me about what's going on in the site. And as Sean described, this notification center, the idea here is that we're bringing in all this functionality in here. Um, and making it easy for a person to access it. So I have two messages and I have four notifications. And let's, let's look through the list here. So um, the first message here is from Jim Jones, and he says, please make it easier for others to register on your site. You have way too many fields. So I realize I, I've got my new .NET Nuke site running .NET Nuke 6.2. There was this new feature about making it easier to um, register a more streamlined registration. So I'm going to go ahead and, and set that up. I'm going to go over to my user account settings. And right now I'm using the standard registration form, which makes people enter a bunch of different fields. But let's make it really simple. So we go to the registration fields. And all I want people to do really is give me their email address so that I can send them lots of great information about more products to buy. And let's go ahead and let them set up their password. And the password confirm. I could choose any, any number of fields that I wanted to. But I think that that's going to go ahead and give it a much more streamlined approach to let people register on the site. So we go ahead and update those settings. We'll take a look and make sure that that went into effect in just a few minutes. So I come back into here, and so I have another message. Where is the owner's manual? So we just released the new product. Documentation is always the last thing that people consider. right? So let's go ahead, and we have the owner's manual. Let's go ahead and um, add a new document. So we have the XBR manual. And so that's there. Let's go back to our messages and let's let's tell Will that he can go back. Obviously we'd want to be a little more polite, but so we, we still have a few other things that we need to take, take care of. We have four, four notifications. So 
we see that we've got a moderated post here that says Will has um, posted um, to the forum post and can't wait to get his new bike. That looks good. We'll go ahead and approve that. And Will also wants to be friends. Let's go ahead and approve that. And that Susan White person, she posted some spam. She says she likes to post spam. We don't even need to look at that post. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And we have another one. This again, the Susan White spamming. She wants to training reels. We'll go ahead and let's we'll approve that one. Maybe she means well. So my notifications. I've I've done everything that I needed to do to interact with that site. I've uploaded it. I've interacted with my community. I could come back in here, and you can see that as I was taking, take, you know, doing everything from my notifications area, it's all being updated into the journal. You can see that the, the activities are taking place. As I deleted items from notifications, they were also deleted from the forum, and they were deleted from um, the journal at the same time. And so there's other things that I could come in here, and I could see this topic here. I could go ahead and like this if I wanted to, and I could go ahead and, and click through and we can see it. So with, with 6.2, it made it much easier. With Dynamic 6.2, it made it much easier for me to come through here, perform the tasks that I need to do to manage my community. You know, For instance, when I get things like my blog module that's updated and I get that installed, I'll be able to moderate my comments and, and approve posts through this, um, the notification area. And really looking for more modules to go ahead and tie in there as well. Um, the, only, the last thing that I need to do just to make sure that my settings took, um, took effect, I want to make sure that that registration form is, of course, simplified. So the best way to confirm that, we log out, and there's our new registration form that we've been able to update with just by adding a few fields, and now people would be able to register. So uh, very quick demo. What we've done there is basically showed a scenario of how managing your community with 6.2 is going to be so much easier. We have all the pieces in place. You can see how the user could come in and they can interact with all the different pieces, things like forums, blogs, and the, the, the common activity feed. And then as administrator, while we've added all these new features, we've made it easier for the administrator to, to take care of those daily tasks that they have to perform and to keep up with their community instead of having to jump through application to application. With that, I will hand it back to Sean. Thanks, Will. So uh, to wrap things up, I would encourage people as next steps to uh, download .nanook 6.2. It's available immediately on our website at .nanook.com. Uh, the other thing I should probably mention is, as, we, as always, we provide a supported upgrade path from any previous version of .nanook to 6.2. So the upgrade path is seamless, as you would expect it to be. And so uh, there's really no reason why you shouldn't go and check out .nanook uh, 6.2 today. Thank you very much.